<laughs> ten years of investigates. Congratulations, <laughs> Congratulations to investigates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're a big part of it for <clears throat> a lot of years. Yeah. But before we get to investigates, um, we have a dark story to tell here, Fran, that you were involved in. Oh, yeah? Child labor. <laughs> <laughs> I was the laborer. You were the laborer. <laughs> you were the child laborer, weren't you? I, I did put in some work as a child. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you, uh, I mean, you, you have a, a bit of a family background yeah. um, in broadcast. Yeah, well, I, uh, I grew up watching my dad on TV reporting for CBC Manitoba. I uh, went on my first shoot in kindergarten. <laughs> I was just uh, an extra, so I had to walk back and forth into my school probably about 10 times. <laughs> and uh, I got my first tour of a control room and newsroom around the age of uh, six. <laughs> it hooked me. I saw um, a female anchor. And mm -hmm. I just thought, uh, you know, one day it, I would like to be like her, delivering the news. But uh, I never stuck with anchoring. I've kind of done a little bit of everything. And uh, my first actual paid child labor job yes. <laughs> <laughs> was uh, transcribing interviews for my dad. Mm -hmm. I, I was probably about 15, so not quite too much of a child. <laughs> uh, but I got probably about 10 bucks an hour. He just added it on to my weekly allowance. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> yeah, so that was my first taste of transcribing, which I quickly learned to loathe. It's <laughs> <laughs> not anybody's favorite job. No, no, but it, it was good um, early experience, and I did it before going to broadcasting school. And so then uh, you go off to broadcasting school, and you came in at age 10, and you were still quite young. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, 19 when I started uh, with APTN's crew. Um, when I went to school, uh, I took broadcasting in high school, but uh, I actually knew that APTN was coming. Uh, I didn't believe it, though. Uh, my dad said, you have to go to broadcasting school. And because uh, one day we're going to have our own network, and uh, I didn't believe it at all. Yeah, I, I you know I <laughs> don't think I heard anything about APTN coming, and then all of a sudden it's yeah. here. Uh, were you there for the fireworks? I was there for the fireworks. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I was actually working for a production company hosting a show to air on APTN, and we were filming the making of APTN and I was running around there uh, with heels and a boom mic <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they had just laid down um, grass and so it was a little mushy so I'm running in heels with a boom mic trying to duck <laughs> fireworks <laughs> um, but it, w it was a memorable moment not just because of that but the uh, the whole atmosphere and knowing that you're working on the launch of the world's first indigenous TV network. And uh, I didn't work for APTN at the time, but mm -hmm. I wanted to. Well, and it was, a, it was a year later because APTN was on the air, and I think um, they were just trying to, to, to grab programming together. I mean, really, they, they got the license and they had to run. Yeah. Um, so it was a year later that they started, like, news yeah. um, as a weekly show. And that's about when you came on board. Yeah, I came on, uh, me and uh, five other guys. Uh, we formed the studio crew. And were they all guys <laughs> at that time? They were all guys. There was uh, six of us, and uh, I was the only female. And uh, I kind of got in by chance. Um, one of the other guys didn't meet the criteria for the funding. It was for youth to uh, get funded for an internship at okay. APTN to create the crew. So luck of the draw I, I got in and it, like it was all I ever wanted you know at that time was to get into APTN somehow and uh, fortunately I, I got in that way and uh, the, the five of the six of us me and the five guys we uh, walked into APTN and there was nothing in the studio there was no cameras it was an empty room no lighting no flooring 
and uh, we actually got to pick our positions. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Like, what do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, Wayne, Wayne McKenzie says, you know, who wants to be the switcher? And, you know, guys are raising their hand, and they're all raising their hands. I'm like, well, what about me? <laughs> what am I going to be left with? And uh, I was left with the uh, script assistant position, so counting the show, assisting the director, and... Uh, Again, I think it was um, meant to be because that led me to other things. Yeah. Well, I mean, and you, you became uh, the studio crew director. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't actually long after. Uh, there were changes. Uh, people moved around. And uh, the news director at the time, Dan David, he, um, he had brought in CBC directors. Mm -hmm. And uh, he asked them to choose someone to mentor to be the director. And... I don't know if it's because I was the loudest or <laughs> what, but uh, yeah, yeah, they, they chose me and I started uh, getting my mentorships way back then. And so it's a long tradition that we have at APTN because it hasn't stopped where we grab child labor, <laughs> bring them in as interns, and then like <laughs> just skew them out yeah. into like these high jobs. So, I mean, you're quite young and the, the director's job for uh, people... Um, if people may not know, like in the studio crew, that's really the person who's, um, you know, directing the cameras, doing the crew yeah. calls. It's a, it's a serious leadership position. Everything's on your shoulders. Uh, as the director of the news, everything that goes on the air is your responsibility. If you go to bars or black, it's on you. And that's uh, uh, <laughs> bad hair, bad yeah, lights. Yeah, but it was, it was actually the most uh, rewarding job that I can look back at. Uh, the adrenaline, the rush, the the live uh, mm. shows, not just the newscasts. We did town halls and a lot of multi-camera productions traveling all over Canada. And uh, uh, it was it was really um, inspiring for me to, to have that position because it just made me want to do more. Yeah, because we went from uh, one show a week. It was it was not called National News back then. It was called Envision. Yeah. And then they added Contact, which was uh, a call-in sort of panel show. Yeah. And then news went three days a week. And um, I guess it was it, we went five days a week by 2003. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. around that time. Yeah. And, and everything just uh, really increased. So the weight on my shoulders got heavier. But, um, you know, there was always uh, opportunities to to try new things like back then we were always counting the first live this the first election coverage the first town hall like we were very proud of all those firsts and so do you have like a favorite moment or a craziest <laughs> moment <laughs> um oh man there's 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 a lot uh I mean, a lot of those split-second decisions will always weigh heavy uh, in my memory, you know. Uh, moments of panic looking back at the producer, like, what are we going to do and where are we going next? And they're thinking, and I have to make a decision and just go. Um, so I learned pretty uh, young to uh, make quick decisions and, and safe ones for APTN. Yeah, we had a we, we went live too that that first year right out of the AFM election, right? Yeah, that was that was a big moment, uh, you know, for us young kids on the studio crew, you know, <laughs> looking up at you uh, reporters and producers, like you know, guide us through this, and uh, and we had a lot of good guidance uh, back in those days, and 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 still do, you know, we just don't have as many firsts as we mm -hmm. used to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, and we also, uh, we were, like, we were a young crew. They, they uh, did a survey at some point of the staff, and they were saying at that time that 80% of us were under 30. So um, I, was, I was, like, <laughs> the old maid that had, like, hit 30 or something, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, and there were a few people that were older uh, sort of dragging the average up, but uh, yeah. it was a young crew. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was a young crew. Uh, we a lot of us were fresh out of broadcasting school, which uh, I think was a good transition. And as you know, like now we we are hiring a lot of young people fresh out of broadcasting or journalism school. So mm -hmm. we're carrying on the young tradition. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's like we, we've got kind of maybe. 
half the newsroom is like sort of your 40 plus and the other half is in the 20s. So yeah, yeah, I won't say which side I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the 20s. We started when we yeah, were four. There. Yeah, there. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So um, you left AP10 for a bit. Yeah. Well, yeah, I did. Um, my, my dad wasn't happy about that uh, at all. And uh, I, I should say uh, he's been the role model for me from day one. Um, my dad, Jim Compton, is a founder of APTN. So when I <laughs> said, Dad, I want to move to New York City, he, <laughs> I think, had a, had a mild uh, stroke there, you know. And, and uh, you know, he just didn't want me to. But it was it, it goes back to that inspiration mm -hmm. of directing news every day. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to direct news all day, every day. And like that was my passion. That's what really inspired me and gave me that energy and, and the initiative. And uh, I was doing, it felt like really big things at a young age. So it just made me want to try to move up to uh, one of those bigger networks mm -hmm. um, in New York City. I got close. I uh, was interviewed by MSNBC, but wow. um, yeah, APTN uh, was still calling home, my home territory, uh, Treaty One territory. Yeah. Uh, that was um, calling me back too. And uh, I came back because there was more opportunities and uh, you know, I knew that APTN and I were still connected. Even though I left, the connection was never broken. Uh, my old boss, Ken Welsh, was calling me back for contracts and to fill in. So it felt good to be still needed and wanted back at home. But um, the, the real driving force in coming back was uh, my, uh, my nephew and my niece and uh, the opportunity to move into the news department and switch into an editorial role. That's it, and you, you did. You yeah. switched into an editorial role, and very soon you were uh, a producer on Investigate. Yeah, that was, um, that was uh, it started out where I was uh, coming on to work on the contact show, the call-in show. Right. And uh, uh, APTN's um, current affairs unit produced that. So I came back, we did that for a year, and then we were preparing to launch APTN Investigates, and, and it's APTN's first investigative news unit. You it's know, the world's uh, first indigenous uh, investigative. <laughs> yes, yes, the world's first, and uh, and APTN uh, was the driving force behind it. You know, the CEO wanted it, and 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 uh, we as journalists wanted to delve into those investigative stories, and and of course our audience too wanted uh, us to get into uh, investigative stories a lot more than we were. So uh, there, there was a lot um, on, on us to put together this unit, uh, to create a show from scratch, you know, what kind of format were we going to go with. Um, and at the same time, we, uh, we, we were launching a, another show. So it wasn't just Investigates, there was also In Focus. Right. So we, we scaled down uh, contact, flipped it into a half hour. Uh, we actually stopped doing the call-in portion uh, of that. And of course now it's, it's, it's in focus for a full hour on Wednesdays. But at the time we were uh, doing bi-weekly, a week of Investigates and In Focus, uh, and Cheryl McKenzie as our host and, and Paul Barnsley as our executive producer. So, you know, between, between us, we, we had a lot of decisions to make, uh, a brand new show to launch, and, uh, and a new way of doing investigative journalism to, mm -hmm. to start incorporating into our, our toolbox. Well, what do, you think, what do you think is unique about the uh, investigative show that you, you get that you don't get from other investigative shows? I mean, clearly the, the topics are going to be about Indigenous people, but what else? We're doing the stories that our people need us to do. And uh, to me, that's always been something that APTN uh, was needed for. You know, there's people before us who uh, wanted uh, an Aboriginal network in Canada. And there are storytellers, journalists before us who could not uh, do those stories, uh, who could not get the backing from their newsrooms to uh, do long-term investigations. So I think it was really uh, a service to our people that, that we do this. And, and to me, I think that's what sets it apart the most. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so um, I want to talk to you. Well, first of all, tell me a little bit about where the where the stories for Investigates come from. Like, where do the ideas come from? Uh, well, when we first started, we all uh, had to just generate our own story pitches and stories that you know we wanted to to get into that we hadn't had the time. Uh, or, or, I mean, airtime. You know, we hadn't had the airtime to produce 20 minutes of an investigative uh, story. So, um, first, it came from us uh, as as the reporters. We all sat around and uh, had a really uh, long, engaged pitch pitch session. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, a few of the stories also came from our people. People were emailing us, and uh, you know. Um, of course, I'll remember the first episode, and that was the young boy getting his hair cut in school by a teacher. Uh, that story had to be done, um, and, and, and no one else was doing those kinds of stories. So uh, we, we judged uh, our decisions based on, you know, what is the most important story that needs to be investigated, and, and our people need to hear about that it's going to cause... Uh, dialogue but not just dialogue change in mm -hmm. in someone's life or or in a policy or in in a law you know um, so those were the types of stories that we were really looking to do uh, early on um, you know uh, current affairs but digging deeper into uh, investigations and you did a story um, and it's uh, one that's going to air on Sunday um, and it's part of the retrospectives, and it was on fracking on the blood reserve. And I was thinking, I think that is the first story that I ever heard of that even mentions fracking. Yeah, you're right. Uh, we, we hadn't really gotten into that a lot, so there was a really um, a lot of heavy research that, that had to be done. And, uh, you know, we had heard about fracking and seeing people uh, speaking out about it a lot more but uh, you know there, there was an aspect of it technically understanding what it is yeah. in order to uh, you know understand why people were so against it why uh, was was that elder uh, Lois Frank willing to put her freedom on the line to, to fight against fracking on the blood reserve um, so I had to really wrap my mind around that and, and also uh, the court system that she was now uh, facing. Um, but for me, uh, that story, uh, it, was, it was assigned mm -hmm. <laughs> by Paul. And, uh, you know, being, being the uh, executive producer, he will assign stories as well to... He does a lot of heavy lifting. Yes, on yeah, yeah. You know, he'll, he'll get the, the calls, uh, you know, do the research, and, and then hand a package off to one of the reporters sometimes. So uh, that one came uh, through Paul and... Uh, you know, Lo Lois was a very uh, interesting woman, you know, uh, her, her passion and her fight and all the work that she was doing and, and still is doing. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's often when we do these stories, we meet these individuals whose life work is, is fighting against something or for something they believe in. So she, uh, she really drove me too, <laughs> not just Paul, but uh, okay. drove me and, and inspired me because I had uh, a very important story from an elder uh, that she cared so much about it. She, you know, protested and was arrested and spent time in jail and she was still going through the system. So uh, that was a lot of responsibility for me to be able to tell that, you know, fairly and accurately, and uh, and and what a what a good experience to learn so much about something that is doing um, a lot of damage yeah. underneath us. And then fr from there, I mean, like you you had a good long career at Investigates. Uh, it's not what you're doing now. <laughs> uh, you've been promoted again, just climbing up that corporate entity <laughs> and ladder. Yeah. And uh, you're now the Eastern Executive Producer. You want to tell people all the all the things <laughs> that you do now? <laughs> well, uh, the East is uh, is uh, our bureaus. Um, our, we have in Halifax, Montreal, here in Ottawa, and. Uh, uh, Thunder Bay and uh, also our, our web department is also uh, part of my management so we have uh, our social media 
uh, HQ in Winnipeg, mm -hmm. and uh, and I actually have a, a web writer out in BC. So uh, it's nice to to have people spread out and. Um, Basically, it, it's managing the, the reporters who are filing for APTN News uh, every day, helping them uh, chase the stories and, and file the stories that they want to tell and that I feel that we need to be covering. And, uh, and also uh, here uh, in Ottawa, we produce Nation to Nation, which is uh, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's nice to to still have a show because uh, letting go of investigates, which felt like a baby to me too. Yeah. It was uh, it was hard to let go uh, of that. So at least I, I inherited a new baby, <laughs> and uh, and and working with the web team and uh, and the stories that they're filing and uh, investigating and digging into. You know, uh, they they make me proud on a regular basis with the work that they're doing. But it's also really interesting learning about some of the uh, Google Analytics and the SEOs and and some of the more technical uh, side of that. And then also the social media. Um, it's it's a good responsibility to have. Um, I like having that responsibility to the people. Uh, you know, because it's the people who are on those sites and who will spot an error or or, or a word that should be placed uh, elsewhere. Um, it's such a nice thread <laughs> too, right? Because it it, is. it's different than broadcast. Yeah. If, if you put something on Facebook and somebody writes to you right yeah, away. Yeah, and, and the comments that we see on there and the people interacting uh, you know, with each other. And actually, a lot of the, the story tips that we get through the inboxes on on the platform so that has been really rewarding to be able to manage that because uh, I, I feel that is really uh, what connects us to people and and we have a lot of active people on uh, Facebook especially <laughs> and, and what are you hoping for the the next year well uh, I'm, I'm hoping for another promotion <laughs> I'm uh, working on that now and I mean I guess throughout this interview, it's probably uh, clear that uh, I'm always trying to work uh, my way up and <laughs> uh, and learn more and sponge in uh, all the knowledge that I possibly can. And uh, I think also it should be evident how much I care about APTN. Yeah, and that's a good note to end. On. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thanks, Karen. Thank you.